So Space Marine 2 is out in early access and it's time to do a review and we're going to compare it to Helldivers because that's what everyone wants to do. So hopefully this will be the last time I ever have to compare this game to Helldivers. It's also worth noting in this review, I will not talk about the campaign at all because they have asked us not to talk about it and not do spoilers and I want to respect that so there will be nothing about the campaign here. So what does this game have in common with Helldivers 2? Well, it's a third person shooter and that's it. That that that's all they have in common. The games are basically worlds apart. There's no reason people should have been comparing these, but here we are. I also unfortunately think Space Marine 2 is a victim of the overhype train where everyone was so hyped on it. It's going to be game of the year, the best game ever, that there was realistically no way it would ever live up to expectations. And that's kind of how I feel about it. Like if I had to put a number on it, I would put Space Marines 2 at a maybe five or six out of 10. Not terrible. It's not bad. It's just, eh, it's okay. And ironically, a lot of the things that people said they hated about Helldivers 2 and why they were leaving Helldivers 2 to go to Space Marine 2 are things they're going to find our problems in Space Marine 2. Honestly, the biggest issue I have with the game is the fantasy. I love Space Marines. I love Warhammer. Now, I know every time I say this, someone comes and says, oh, well, if you're really a Warhammer fan, can you name XYZ? Have you read all the lore? Have you played all the games? Have you read all the books? No, but I can still enjoy the, the IP. I can still enjoy the game. I can still enjoy Warhammer without knowing every single thing about it. And as I said, ironically, that's why a lot of people left Helldivers 2. They said, well, I want to be this overpowered Marine. I want to have these big weapons and huge explosions and overpower enemies. And that's what Space Marine 2 should be. You're a Space Marine, you're genetically modified beyond human walking tank. But you get surrounded by a few puny units and your armor and health gets shredded in a matter of seconds. And like the game has a melee focus, but there's enemies who can block you, which I get that from like a gameplay standpoint. Like I understand mechanically why that has to be. But you're trying to tell me that this random lizard dude with a wooden shield can block a space marine who can put like 2.5 tons of force behind his hit like that makes no sense to me and that's one of those really hard things to balance right when you're doing mechanics versus lore well what translates to lore doesn't always translate to gameplay and i understand that and i respect that but it really takes me out of the power fantasy like even in game if you're using the sprint button you can run through humans like, you can just squish them because you're a walking tank. So if you run through them, they turn into a red mist. It's hilarious. But again, this random little dude with a wooden shield can block the full force of my hit. That, that makes no sense. Another one of the ironies is people complained about loadouts in Helldivers 2 and feeling forced to bring the same gear over and over and over again. And Space Marine 2 uses class systems, and it's very clear that some of the weapons are better than the others, so you end up bringing the same gear over and over again. So it's again, it's one of those ironies that I just kind of find interesting that this is what people said they were going to leave for, and then this game has the same issues. And again, that's not to say Space Marines 2 is a bad game. I think it's fun, but I definitely think there's some issues they need to address, and I'm confident they will. The studio already has a roadmap. They've been very good about listening to the community and talking about things that they want to add that the community has, so I have no doubt the devs are going to deliver. But from a gameplay review... I would say this one needs a little bit more time before I would say drop $100 on it like I did. Another big frustration I have is just how long it takes to play the game. Like boot up takes some time, you go onto the battle barge from like your solo campaign, then you have to walk to the computer, that takes time, you select a mission, and then you get stuck on a loading screen. And right now there seems to be some sort of issue, uh, some disconnecting issues and some issues with multiplayer where it's not working perfectly which is creating these situations where, okay, I joined this mission and I wait three minutes, no one joins the mission, so I have to quit the game, go back in, wait through all those loading screens again, create a lobby, wait again, still isn't working. Like, no joke, it took me almost 15 to 20 minutes to get into a match. And this is a PvE match, so working together, you grab two other Space Marines and you have an objective to do on a linear map. And the linear maps are also a problem. Now, I know everyone wants open world games now, and I'm happy they didn't go with open world. If that wasn't their vision, I think it's a very good thing for them to say, we wanted to make a linear game, so we made a linear game. Not everything has to be open world. The problem I have is that they have these random spikes where, okay, I'm walking slowly for like 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes past, nothing happens. And then, oh no, enemy ambush, so high adrenaline for two, three minutes while that fight goes through. And then 
two, three minutes of nothingness. Like there's these peaks and valleys of funness and unfunness where you're just walking. Granted, the game looks beautiful, so it's okay to walk around and explore the scenery. Like it's worth doing. There's little goodies to find, there's hidden things to find, and it looks great. But I don't think that's super great gameplay from, again, reviewing it as a game. It's not fun to have these peaks and valleys where like, this is really fun, but then you have to do something unfun for five minutes, but then you get to have fun again, but then you have to do something unfun for five minutes, but then you get to have fun again. They need to find a way to level that out. Comparing that to Helldivers 2, because the map is open world, at least not as linear as the maps in Space Marine 2, and this is especially true when you're on like level 10 difficulty, when you have those downtimes, you finally breathe a sigh of relief and say, ah, finally, there's no enemies. I can do an objective, or I can do this side objective, or I can get something done. There's something interesting to do. And I feel like a lot of the Space Marine 2 maps lack that interesting thing to do in those lulls. On to sound design. I think Space Marine has some great sound effects for like the weapons, they feel weighty, they feel chunky. The sounds of someone getting turned into red chunks feels good, sounds good. But the music is kind of just bland, boring, generic fantasy music. Like, I certainly wouldn't put it on the level of Stardew Valley or a Final Fantasy game or anything that has, like, some legendary music. And that's a bummer. I think a lot of people overlook this, but sound design is one of the most important things in games. Like, if a game has a good enough soundtrack that I can listen to that while I'm working or doing something else, like, it helps me hype up the game, it helps me love the game, it helps me immerse into the game, it brings forth feelings. And I just don't see myself Googling the original soundtrack for this game and listening to it, you know? Let's talk about the classes for a second. Not long ago, I made a video that I said I wish Helldivers 2 had some classes. I think classes are a great thing for a game, and I'm glad we have classes here. But I do have some gripes with it. Mostly that you can only have one of each class in a PvE environment. That's okay, I understand that. It's a balancing thing. Again, mechanically, that makes sense. But why then, if I can't play the Bulwark class, does it match me with other people who are currently selecting the Bulwark class? where it creates these awkward moments where both people are kind of silently staring at each other, waiting for someone to quit the game or change their class. It should either not match me with people who are already my current class, or give me like a tier system or a ranking system where I can say, well, I want to play this, but if that's already taken, I'm willing to play this. And if that's already taken, I'm willing to play this. That makes it much more seamless and much more fun. But I do love that each class feels different and they have a role to fill. And when you're fulfilling that role, you feel good in that role. The sniper's main job is taking out bigger enemies, heavy units, and being able to cloak, sneak around the map and take out those big guys so they're not threats to the tanks. That just feels amazing. That feels peak gameplay. When you're playing the bulwark and you're surrounded by enemies and you drop your banner and everyone's regenerating shield and you're just massacring through thousands and thousands of little grunts, that feels great. When you're playing the assault and you get a jump pack into the air and come slamming down and take out a whole group of enemies, that feels wonderful. But unfortunately, there are so many things that don't feel wonderful. The button on controller to use your med kit and switch your guns are the D-pad right next to each other, which leads to these moments where you accidentally use your one and only stem when you just want to swap guns. That feels terrible. Being a tank class who's supposed to get in melee range and watching your armor get shredded in 1.5 seconds doesn't feel great. Being a melee focused class in what appears to be a melee focused game and only having one button for melee feels like a really strange choice. And of course, like in every multiplayer game, when you have allies who have no idea what they're doing or playing poorly, that doesn't feel good. I know some people have said that the linear environment will get repetitive and after you've done the same mission five or six times, there's no point in doing it. I don't think that's really going to happen because with the way that enemies work and the way you have all the different hidden goodies and like trying to find the gene seed and carry it to the end. I think you'll end up a lot like Helldivers, where you can just do the same mission over and over and over again, and the little differences in the mission make it feel completely new or fresh. So I think the mixed reviews that this game came out to are fair. I think saying it's a 5 out of 10 is a fair review right now. But I also know the devs put a lot of heart and soul into this game, and I appreciate what they've made, and I've enjoyed what they've made, and I know that they're going to continue to work on it, and I think it's going to definitely get better with the next patch, with the next update. So if you're an absolute Warhammer fan, I think you're going to enjoy the campaign well enough that you definitely should get it. But if you don't like Warhammer or you're only here for like the multiplayer, I think you might give it a little bit of time or get it on the first sale to really get the most bang for your buck. 
And with that, hopefully we can stop comparing this game to Helldivers 2, because again, as I said in the beginning, they are nothing alike. The fantasy is different, the mission structure is different, the way classes or characters work is different, the guns and loadouts are different. Even the enemies, I would say, are vastly different in the way they interact with the way you are, because there's not as much melee focus in Helldivers 2, whereas it's the main focus of Space Marine 2. And I cannot emphasize enough, I'm not here just to say, oh, the game's bad, don't buy it. That's not what I'm saying at all. I enjoy the game. I'm going to continue to play the game. I have high hopes that they're going to fix some of the gripes that I have. It's just at a time where, you know, money is hard to come by and people are struggling more and more. Rent and groceries, $60 is a lot of money. So people want an honest review towards a game before buying it because nothing feels worse than wasting $60 on a game that you play for an hour or two and say, yeah, this is awful. And then you never pick it up again. So here's to new updates for Helldivers 2 and Space Marine 2, games that can live side by side and I don't really think have anything to do with each other, and I don't think we're going to see too many more comparisons between the two now that it's released and the hype will die down. As always, leave a comment down below if you've played Space Marine 2, what do you like about it so far? And also, as always, have a blessed day.